Welcome to our long-awaited monster truck edition of Get the Dirt. We have quite a summer so far discovering interesting reading trails. To go along with the library summer reading program, the theme, Digging Deeper, we have had trails about dirt diggers, dog diggers, and today, grave diggers. Grave digger? I hear your wheels turning on your axles. And no, not undertakers nor grave robbers. And yes, this does have to do with monster trucks. Just who is Grave Digger? Let's get the dirt. We'll start with the book called Monster, Great Monster Trucks. On the cover, you'll see a picture of Grave Digger. Can you see his name on the side of the monster truck? Let's get the dirt. By digging deeper in the index section of the book, the end index is found in the back of the book, lists and select topic type words on the pages on which they can be found. The words in the index are listed in alphabetical order. So we could find Gravedigger in the, yes, G section of the, in the G section I see General Tire and then Gravedigger. First page list listed for us to look at is page 10. The caption for the picture for Gravedigger says, Gravedigger was originally built by Dennis Anderson from North Carolina. This truck is famous for its no-fear approach to racing and its impressive freestyle performances, often being repair, pre prepared to go the extra mile to please its fans. So, we got the dirt, that grave digger, yes, we learned that grave digger was made by Dennis Anderson and is from North Carolina. Grave digger also has a no fear approach to racing and goes the extra mile to please its fans. Goes the extra mile? Well, does that mean grave digger drives one more mile than all the other monster trucks? No. Goes the extra mile is an idiom, a group of words that mean one thing, not at all to what they are related. Go the extra mile comes from a custom under Roman, the Roman Empire. A Roman could order a Jew to carry his pack one mile. Jesus exhorted them to show kindness and carry the pack two miles. So when we hear that gra grave digger goes the extra mile, it means that he does extra to make people happy. Now let's go to the next page about grave digger. Let's see. Page 28. To, let's get the dirt on more pic, on more things about Gravedigger. Hmm, this page has no picture of Gravedigger. But it does mention it in the caption of the picture that Gravedigger is part of a fleet of monster trucks. Let's see what page 59 says about Gravedigger. Aha! Here are some pictures of Gravedigger. Ouch. Look at him with his wheel up in the air. That had to hurt. I wonder what the caption says about these pictures. It takes more than a rollover and a bit of damaged bodywork to stop Dennis Anderson and his ionic truck gravedigger. Dennis has built his reputation on his fearless freestyle runs, but he lets his emotions show in 2004 when he won't let Monster Jam Racing World Finals. If you want to check out this book or others like it on Monster Trucks, get the dirt in the 6 to 9 section of the library with other books about engineering of things. Okay, so we learned that Gravedigger is a monster truck, but what is a monster truck? Let's get the dirt. When I got the dirt on monster trucks, I found so many books about them. Each book had a few extra snippets about what makes a monster truck a monster truck. And how monster trucks are used. Let's start with this book by Kristen L. Nelson. I found it in the 796 section of the library. It was listed in the 796 section 
because of the sport of monster trucks. This book is part of the Lightning Books Bo Lightning Bolts Books series created for early reader readers. If you go to the table of contents in each book, you can find how to find thing how to find what you're looking for really easily. The table of contents is handy if you want to know specific information found in the book, but don't want to read the entire book to find the information. What makes this truck different from other trucks? This truck is a monster truck. Monster trucks fly through the air. A monster truck shows. They crush cars. Monster trucks race through the mud. They look big and mean, like monsters. Monster trucks have giant tires. This truck's tires are so big that you could stand up inside of them. Monster truck tires have thick tread. Tread helps the tires grip so the dirt track grip the dirt track so the truck does not slip. A monster truck's giant tires are attached to the frame. The frame holds the tires and the body together. The driver rides high up in the body. She sits in the cab. Some monster trucks have special bodies. This truck, tough truck has muscles. Look at this truck. It's called Snakebite. Look at its body. How do you think Snakebite got its name? Vroom, vroom, vroom. Monster trucks are louder than other trucks. Monster truck has very noisy engine. A engine gives a monster truck power and speed. Monster truck shows Monster trucks show off their power at monster truck shows. Crunch! This truck crushes cars with its four big tires. This truck glides high through the air. This truck stands on its two back wheels. It's doing a wheelie. This truck races in a mud bogging contest. In a mud bogging contest, Two monster trucks race through thick mud. The winner is the truck that goes the farthest through the mud. These two monster trucks race around a track. The trucks go up a steep ramp during a race. Then they fly over a row of cars. Where do they land? This truck lands on, the, on a ramp that slats, that slants toward the ground. Most monster trucks land safely on all four tires. Ouch! This monster truck has rolled over. The, is the driver safe? Yes! Strong metal bars called a roll, keep, ca roll cage keep the driver from being crushed. The roll cage fits around the top of the cab. Drivers wear seat belts and helmets for safety too. When do you wear a seatbelt or a helmet? Look, this monster truck driver has finished his race safely. He is a winner. This is a body. That would be the roll cage. With Remember, the roll cage is a spot with special strengthening bars. That's the cab, wheel, frame, tires. There are two monster trucks that have extra huge tires. Their tires are 10 feet tall. That's as tall as a basketball hoop. What would happen if a monster truck drove into a lake? Its giant tires have so much air inside that the truck would float. Some monster trucks have see-through floors. The drivers can see the tires and the track underneath them. Most monster trucks have real headlights. Do not have real headlights. 
Headlights are just painted on a monster truck's body. Real headlights are too heavy. They would slow down the truck. Those are some really cool facts that we found out about monster trucks. Monster Trucks on the Move is a great book for getting the overview of what monster trucks are and how they were used. Ooh, let's read this one by Matt Dolan. It has Grave Digger on the front. What do we use what do we use the table of contents for? Yep. Table of contents help us helps us find things if we don't want to read the book completely cover to cover. The monster truck Black Salyan is about to crush an old bus. Fans scream and cheer. The truck's noisy engine is louder than the crowd. Black Stallion bounces above the bus. All four tires in the air. The fans yell even louder. With more than 10,000 pounds, Black Stallion comes down with a thud. The driver gets out and waves to the crowd. Bob Chandler built the first monster truck in the 1970s. He named it Bigfoot. Monster truck wheels were first used for huge tractors. Extra large axles hold the wheels. Monster trucks have powerful engines. The trucks can go up to 70 miles an hour. Monster trucks have strong chocks. These springs allow the trucks to land safely from a hundred foot jumps. Roll cages pr protect drivers during crashes. Officials use officials use a shutoff switch to turn off the engine if the driver can't reach the key. monster truck diagram. These are the shocks. We didn't learn about the shocks in the other book, but the shocks, they're sort of a spring to help cushion the landing so you don't get hurt. That's the tire. That's the engine. We learned that monster truck engines are very powerful. And that's the roll cage. Now what was the roll cage for again? You're right. The roll cage was pr to protect the driver. Monster truck drivers enter car crashing events. The trucks drive over old cars. Some drivers race their trucks. They speed through turns and over jumps. They also race over old cars. That hurt the old cars. Look at all of them down there. Freestyle monster truck driving is another event. Drivers do wheelies, jumps, donuts, and other tricks. Gravedigger jumps over old cars. Do you remember what we learned about Gravedigger? He was the first monster truck we learned we're learning about today. Here's two books which were also written by for early readers. These blast off readers are both called monster trucks. Very, very descriptive title. One was written by Nick Gordon and found in the 796 section of the section of the library. The other was written by Chris Bowman and found in the 629 section of the library. Monster trucks. Table contents. Monster trucks race along trucks. Their tires kick up mud. Monster trucks also speed over big jumps. 
Monster trucks have big parts. Their tires are taller than a kid. That's big tires. Sometimes monster trucks flip. Strong roll cages protect drivers. Roll cages, roll cages must be very important in a monster truck so the driver doesn't get hurt. Supercharged engines give monster trucks their power. They make whining noise. Monster trucks do wild tricks. They turn in circles and they do donuts. They also ride on their back wheels. Then they hit the ground. This is called a slap wheelie. If you look at this truck, our friend has it the same truck. Do you see the similarities? It's the same truck. This, they're called Maxo. Looks like a very big truck to me. And the truck over on this page, it's called El Toro Loco. In Spanish, that means El Toro, the bull, the crazy bull. So you can get toy monster trucks too. They're a lot cheaper than real monster trucks. Monster trucks crash when tricks go wrong. Fans cheer when drivers get out safety. Safely. What a thrill. The other last stop reading monster truck book. Even though it has the same title, the cover looks differently. Different, which will help us decide what book we were reading. Cheers fill the arena. Fans are excited for the monster truck show. The trucks rev their engines. Then they take off. I see El, Lo El Toro Loco. Can you find him in the lineup of ones? I also see the grave digger. There's El Toro Loco. And there's the grave digger. What monster truck is this? Remember, we learned about this monster truck today. One truck hits a jump. It flies through the air. Then it drives over a row of cars. Nothing can stop this machine. Monster trucks need a lot of space. Shows usually take place at arenas or fairgrounds. Fans fill the bleachers. That's how tall an average human is compared to a monster truck. Monster trucks must be huge. Sometimes the trucks race. They speed around tight turns and over jumps. That's the grave digger. In freestyle events, they do tricks. They spin, crush cars, and soar through the air. That's Bigfoot. Remember? Bigfoot was the very first monster truck. Monster trucks, monster truck bodies are made of fiberglass. The bodies all look different. Trucks are painted and even given names. Monster trucks have loud supercharged engines. These power the trucks into the air. The shocks allow the trucks to hit bumps at high speeds. Huge tires help the trucks grip the course. They are more than five feet tall. That's about the height of an average 12 year old. Me. Metal roll cages protect the drivers during crashes. Most drivers sit in the middle of the truck. A harness keeps them in place. A switch near the driver turns off the truck. A remote can also shut it off. People come from all over to see, watch monster truck shows. The trucks 
amaze with their power and tricks. They continue to draw big crafts. Wow. Now that we got the dirt on a bit more on monster trucks, would like to meet some of my monster trucks friends who came to visit. Do you remember El Toro the El Toro? El Loco Toro, sorry. Remember? We saw him in the books. He means the crazy bull. We also saw Max Zero in the books. Remember what we learned about them all having fiberglass bodies? That helps them stay light. The toys, though, are made of plastic. This one is Wild Streak. It has a zebra on the side. What was your favorite monster, monster truck out of all those? Mine probably had to be El Loco Toro. El Toro Loco, sorry. Say, did you know you could make your own monster truck out of toy vehicles you have at home? No, you won't be able to drive them, but you can have fun playing with them. Let's get the dirt. This is one of the monster trucks that we made. Let's show you how to make one all by ourselves. Make sure you have a grown-up's permission to make monster to make a monster truck. Show them the supplies that you'll be using. Find a vehicle you find a toy vehicle you have around the house to use as the body for your monster truck. I could use a toy skateboard or a mail truck. I think I'm going to use the mail truck. Find a cardboard box. Or cardboard. I have some cardboard. It doesn't necessarily have to be a box. You just need cardboard. Find two sharpened pencils equal in length. Find a toilet paper tube. Find scissors and tape. Any kind of tape will do. It doesn't have to be scotch tape. Find a can or lid or other round object to trace for wheels. We used this can of chicken to trace for these wheels. Accurate accoutrements and markers are optional. Are optional. With your can, trace and cut out four wheels. Mark the center of your circles. That's the hub of your wheel. All right, so I have my chicken breast. I'm gonna put it on the cardboard and I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to do it all the way around it being careful to not move the chicken can while I'm tracing now I'm going to take out my pair of scissors careful this part sharp and I'm going to cut out the tire
Remember what we learned about the roll cage when we were working on when we were reading books about monster trucks? The roll cage is the very important part of a monster truck. I chose the mail I chose the mail delivery car because it sort of looks like it has one. So in case the toy monster truck tips over, the driver will be safe. Cut open the toilet paper tube. I'm going to cut on the side like this. Oops. That's the one disadvantage having monster trucks on the table today. They have a mind of their own, and their wheels go everywhere. Wrap your pencil with the tube. Make sure the pencil has wiggle room. Enough, but not a lot. Then, this part's going to be tricky because it's hard to wrap the cardboard around the pencil. Now that I have that, then I'm going to take my pair of scissors and I'm going to cut it right here. Then I'm going to take some scotch tape and put it on the roll so it won't change shape. Then once I find my pencil again, you should be able to put it through. It has wiggle room, but it's not too big. This that we just made, that would be called the axle housing. And this pencil works as the axle. It's sort of fun to play with it like this. Now let's make the next one. So we have what's left of the toilet paper tube, and we're going to wrap it around the pencil. then tape it in some places so it doesn't change. Again, this is the axle housing, and what's this? Yes, it's a pencil. But it's also the axle for our car. Now, I'm going to take one wheel and carefully, because you don't want to get hurt, you want to poke the pencil through the center. Make sure that your fingers are not there on the other side. Twisting will help. This is the hub of your wheel. Now you want to put it all the way to the end. There, for instance. Now you put on the axle housing right there. Then you take your other wheel. These monster trucks have a mind of their own, I'm telling you. And you poke the other wheel through. Carefully, because you don't want to get hurt. This is where you might want to have your mom or dad help you. This is the hub of the second wheel. You might spread it out a little bit from the axle housing. And we have one set of wheels. Let's do it for the next set. So we have a pencil. This is why it's important to have a sharp pencil. And you poke it through the center, you point it through the hub, careful not to poke yourself, 
twisting helps. Once it's to the other section, put on the axle housing. And pop on the second wheel. Make sure to go in the center where the hub would be. The second wheel is trickier because we have the axle housing on. Then once you have it on, you can move the wheels so your axle housing can move freely. Cut a rectangle shape of cardboard to serve as your new chassis. I'm going to take a wing off this box right here so it's big enough. Once I have it, I can cut it to the right width so it will work with my wheels. So I'm going to cut off this section over here. If you want, you can even make it fancier by taking it and making it into the bed of a truck back here. I think I might do that. So I'm going to cut it into thirds. Well, how to make sure, measure to make sure it's in thirds is you want to be able to fold it over three times. Sort of like this. And then I would cut where the creases are. It doesn't have to be exact, but it works. Now, you can Tape one end right here. Make sure you tape it in the front and back. If you get a long enough piece of tape, this is a little bit too long, so I'm going to cut it in half. Then, you can take it and you can go all the way across. That will help hold it firm. Make sure to do both sides. This part is trickier if you're making one like it. Then you would do the exact same thing for the other sides of it, making sure. And then, for extra stability, you can tape this side to the panel that we already put up. Make sure to tape it on the inside. You don't want to forget taping it on the inside. That'd be bad. And then, you can put it together like this. You're almost done your monster truck. Good job. Just one more side and we're going to be done. So, first we have to tape the outside. This is getting trickier now that I have it almost completely cased in. And then in the inside. Those monster trucks, I tell you, they have they are going to go off the table. And then to the other remaining sections. Now that we have the back, what do you think we do next? Yep. Now we put it on the axle housing. 
Now I put the chassis on the axle housing so it can turn. We need to be careful for this part though to make sure that it doesn't rub on the wheels because that will slow your monster truck down. To do that, you need to take some pieces of tape and go over the axle housing and down on both sides. Do two or three sections of tape to make sure it's on there firmly because you don't want your wheels falling off in the middle of a race. Now, let's attach the other set. Make sure that the wheels can spin freely. It's tricky when your hand's there. And get some pieces of tape and attach the axle housing to the chassis. It's a hard word to say. The pieces of tape to attach the axle, they're going to have to be longer because otherwise it will not reach the chassis enough to stay on there. The nice thing with these is they should just stay on nicely and work. I'm having trouble with the end over here because I'm pushing a little bit too hard to try to get it on. Longer pencils would help. The longer the pencil is, the easier it is to put the wheels on. So a brand new pencil with a point just put on, that would be awesome. Now that we have the body, now we're going to put in the cab. Let's say this is this special iron um, se section that would make the cab extra strong. So if it tips over, the roll bar will protect it. So I'm going to put it right here. Look good? Okay. And... I'm going to tape it down. This time you don't want the wheels to, you don't want the wheels to move on this truck right now because this truck has to stay there. I'm going to need a longer piece of tape. So let's figure out how we want to tape the roll bar to the truck so it doesn't move. going to need really long pieces of tape for this one. I think two more should do it to make sure the front end stays good. Because we definitely don't want it falling off. In this case, you need to be careful so for the seat so you can still put your person on after it's all taped up. Because you don't want your person not to be able to get on your mo their monster truck. I think this is securely attached. Now, the last thing you have to do is get your person, the very brave race car driver, monster truck driver, and put him in your monster truck. If you and a friend make these, you can have races. You can even put make tiny little uh, monster truck tracks and have them crush their own cars. Granite. The cars may not be crushed, but you can pretend. Use your imagination. And, if you really want to, you can put decorate it and 
make it your own version. You can even name it. This could be called the mail carrier. Who knows? Those monster trucks. There are so many books written about monster trucks. Here are some I recommend for early readers. This one is a great book. Here's some pi more pictures of Gravedigger, the first monster truck we learned about today. These are some more books. This is called More Monster Trucks. It's a great book if you like big pictures and want to learn more about monster trucks. This is a more chapterish version of some of the books. It gives you more details, but it has less pictures. This one is called Mega Machines Monster Trucks. It is a lot like more monster trucks because it has nice big pictures and words. Here's another book that's called Mighty Machines Monster Trucks. It again has very big pictures and easy to read words. If you are a beginner reading reader and enjoy books about monster trucks, the fictional character Blaze and his friends, check out what the library has for you. It comes in a case and if you open it, there's tiny little books that have stories about monster trucks and are great for beginning readers. These types of book, books are found in their own special section of the library. Be sure to get the dirt from your librarian. If you want to get the dirt on the first monster truck, you'll want to be sure to get the dirt. I found this book very helpful. The original monster truck, Bigfoot. It has some pictures, but it's mostly words. It's written by Scott D. Johnson. Well, that was a fun learning about wheels, axles, chassis, hubs, axle housings, and rebar. The special stuff that keeps the driver safe. All of which are just a few of the many parts that make up a monster truck. I hope you are inspired to dig deeper at your local library. All that reading adds up to part of your million dollar education and makes you eligible for some great summer reading prizes. Be sure to join me next week for our Digging Deeper segment, which is aired on Tuesdays. I'm going to share with you my current career pursuit. Until then, get the dirt on your, pa on your passions at your local library. Bye, see you next time.